guys, this is Tatiana again with your health clinic. First of all, thank you so much for all your subscriptions. Thanks to all my new subscribers. I really appreciate it. Thanks for all your emails that you're sending to me with a lot of questions. It really gives me an idea what kind of videos I would uh, make in the future. So to be more helpful to all my uh, friends, clients, uh, uh, patients and viewers, so anybody. Now, today we're going to speak about GMO, uh, GMO uh, crop in the United States. And the right away I'm going to tell you that I've got this information from Environmental Work Group. I've got this email this morning. And for those of you who don't know about this um, organization, this is a non-profit organization and it's located in Washington, D.C. So let's start with the main GMO, um, genetically modified organisms, crop in the United States. So that's what it says. The letter said that according to Environmental War Group, more than 75% of food in supermarkets is genetically modified or contains genetically modified ingredients. So 75% is, it's, it's a big number actually. So let's start with four most common genetically modified uh, organisms and genetically modified uh, organisms ingredients that you can find in uh, different kinds of um, different kinds of food and especially processed food. Now, number one, it's a corn and corn derived ingredients. So 90% of field corn grown in the United States is cultivated to feed animals. So my input here would be like if animals eating all this uh, genetically modifying uh, corn, so what would be in their cells? So would we eat just uh, pure protein or what we're, go we're gonna eat like mm, genetically modified tissues and cells, who knows? But um, this is the 90%, uh, it's a, uh, like I said, it's again, it's a large number. Now, 12% of genetically modified corn is processed to corn flour, high fructose corn syrup, corn starch, masa, corn meal, and corn oil. So consumers also should assume that all these genetically modified ingredients all in processed food. So anyway, it's nice to stay away from all this processed food to be more on the safe side. Now, I would like to mention that most sweet corn that's sold in supermarkets and in the stands in the United States are not grown from genetically modified uh, seeds. So a few uh, varieties are, but it's, been, um, it's best to buy organic still anyway because you never know what you're getting. Now, a uh, second um, crop would be soybean and soybean derived ingredients. So soybean are the second most planned American crop. It covered more than 76 millions of acres uh, in the United States back in 2014, so last year. And 96 out of, uh, and 93 percent out of the 76 millions of soybean grown here is, of course, genetically modified. So consumers should assume that all labels disclosing the presence of soy proteins, soybean oil, soy milk, soy sauce, um, soy flour, soy lecithin, uh, tofu, it's, uh, there have been made with genetically modified organisms unless they, uh, they stating that it's certified organic or genetically modified free, GMO free. So the first uh, crop was corn, second one is soybean. Now let's go to the third one. Third one is unfortunately sugar, and I said unfortunately because it's actually it's pretty much in everything nowadays. So about 55% of sugar produced in the United States comes from beet sugar. And 95% of this beet sugar have been genetically modified already. So if it's labeled, if it's if the label says that it does not, I mean if the label does not specify that the product made with pure cane sugar, then chances are significant that it contains genetically modified beet sugar. So watch out for, I mean, uh, watch if it says pure cane sugar. So that's what would be better to get. 
Now, and the fourth, uh, and the fourth one would be uh, vegetable oils. So it says about 90% of U.S. oilseed production is soybean, which are almost entirely genetically modified, right? So how many percent? Uh, yeah, it's no, 93%, so almost all of them. Now, the remaining 10% of oilseed crops are cotton seed, sunflower seed, canola, rapeseed, and peanut oils. So canola and cotton seed oils primarily comes from genetically modified varieties. So more than 90% of corn oils are genetically modified for you to know. And consumers should assume that vegetable oil, canola, cotton seed, soybean, and corn oils are genetically modified organisms. So I was telling you right now about four um, four crops, which is corn, soybean, uh, soybeans, sugar, and vegetable oils. All right. So now let's go uh, for um, if you um, for a couple of vegetables that already genetically modified. So number one is papaya. And according to the Hawaiian Papaya Industry Association, more than 75% of Hawaiian papaya is genetically modified to resist the uh, ring spot virus. So it's nice that ring spot virus would not be uh, in, you know, in, on this crop, but on the other side, the GMO, it, it has to be a GMO. Of course, it's resisting that virus. So, and it's been declared back in 2013 in Hawaiian Papaya Industry Association um, articles. So, number one is papaya. Another one is um, another one is zucchini and yellow summer squash. So, if you varieties of squash are genetically modified. Uh, that's good, not all of them. And unfortunately, without labeling, consumers can't spot genetically modified varieties. So if you want to stay on the safe side, just go ahead and get organic ones. And in other news I would like to share from this article, it also says that many other genetically modified food could be coming soon to grocery markets near you and it's very very interesting because the um, whatever they mentioned actually I was I was very surprised so these have either been approved by the Federal Food and Drug Administration or are being considered for approval so among them salmon salmon or salmon people say in different way flax flaxseed so you guys who know me, who know me personally, you know how uh, how I'm, you know, completely staying away, and I'm not agree on all this flaxseed meal when people taking that for health issues. I'm not agree with that. I mean, flaxseed oil is magnificent thing; it's wonderful. But flax is, yeah, it's actually. Uh, I knew about that before. So flax, uh, plums, uh, potato. Uh, radishes, uh, rice, tomato, and all wheat, and it's been declared by FDA in 2014. So uh, I don't know, just um, about the salmon, it's kind of something new. And the FDA is considering a producer's application for genetically modified aqua advantage salmon. So it's considering a producer's application. So. What does it mean? It means that normal salmon, that uh, normal salmon produce growth hormone only in summer month, right? So that's natural time of the year to produce um, uh, uh, growth hormones. But this aquadvanish fish will produce uh, growth hormones all year round. So what does it mean? It means that normal salmon produce growth hormone only in summer months, right? But this aquadvantage fish will produce them all year round and grow at twice the normal rate. So if the FDA approves aquadvantage salmon, it will be the first genetically modified, like they call animal, uh, available in American uh, supermarkets. So I don't know what uh, size it's gonna take, but I assume it's uh, gonna, I mean, right now the salmon is pretty, uh, have a pretty big sizes, but probably it's gonna occupy all uh, counter in a, you know, in a fish um, department, um, you know, area. So we'll see, who knows. And um, 
well i guess i'm done for today with this letter i'm going to prepare another video probably in a couple of days and i'm going to tell you about uh dirty dozen and uh, clean 15 and besides that neutral uh, i'm going to give you neutral list of the food so guys if you really like uh, this uh, video please put your thumbs up it's really helpful i get more minutes from youtube uh when i get that and if you like Again, please subscribe. I'll try to be as, um, you know, as informative as I can. Okay, and thank you so much. You have a wonderful, wonderful times. Stay healthy and wealthy. It was Tatiana with Euro Health Clinic. Bye.